All right, listen here. I made, you know, $19,000 on prize picks last year. I know it ain't paying the mortgage. Actually, I was told by TikTok that it does pay the mortgage, apparently. I've been in New York City too long. It's like fucking five months of rent. So sad. 19K last year. I know it's not a lot. I'm not a huge gambling guy, so I think I did well. And I stick to what I know. I'm not a guy who uses wild analytics. I'm not out here fucking creating optimizers and things like that. I try to use common sense and I try to double and triple down on my strengths as it, that's just a life lesson. You know, things that I feel like I'm very good at, I try to triple down on it. It's why I make videos. I'm not a blogger. I hate writing. I don't do it when I first started this content shit. I started off blogging and I realized really quickly, like, this ain't it for me. I'm not going to be a goddamn Pulitzer Prize winner over here. But I tell you what, I can get in front of a camera and yell at people like a motherfucker, all right? So we're talking about the single biggest revenue maker for me on that 20K that I made last year off of prize picks. And it is so wildly obvious to me uh, that I feel like now is the time to stri strike on it because the openings do not stay here forever. And what I'm referring to specifically is is the season-long props that prize picks drops and they're live right now on their app and on their website prizepicks.com season long for nfl players everything starts way too high everything starts way too high and i'll explain exactly why again from a common sense standpoint that makes too much sense and it will make you too much sense it'll make you too many dollars here okay uh, of the slips that i made in the preseason of the slips i made throughout the summer last year probably made like 25 to 30 individual slips comprised of multiple season long player props right so you have to make a slip and it might be like three different players and what their season long props are on the website right now they have uh, a decent portion of players up right now but they'll have way more statistics receptions targets etc and more players available as the spring and summer go on but of like the 25 30 slips i made I won a very high percentage of them right I did not put a ton of money into prize picks to play probably between like 8 10k that I turned into you know almost doubled it 99% uh, of the slips that I made were unders they were the lower on whatever the projection was for the player of the slips that I got wrong right there weren't a lot of them but of the slips that I got wrong maybe I hit seven or eight out of ten slips right if you you know amplify that out to 25 30 slips of the ones I got wrong 95% of the ones I got wrong, if I got a slip that had two or three right, but I got one wrong, the wrong was almost always going with a more. Everybody loves hitting the mores. They love hitting the overs. They're like, there's no way this guy goes under. This is such a fucking lock. Famous last words. It's a lock that this guy goes over. Famous fucking last words words. And I'll tell you why right off the rip, okay? In order for a player to hit their over on the season long props. One on prize picks they're juiced as shit, okay? So the numbers are so high to begin with that I don't feel comfortable taking anything but the lower, but the reason that I like taking the lower in order for a player to hit more, in order for a player to hit over on his season-long projections, he has to have a perfect season. And I don't mean he needs to be perfect on the field, but everything within that season needs to go flawlessly. He needs to play all 17 games, which is a lot to ask for for NFL players nowadays. He needs to make sure the offense around him does not crumble. If you're if you're betting on a running back and two key offensive linemen, or even like one key offensive lineman, goes down with an injury, what are the chances that some of your offensive linemen get hurt? Decently high percentage. If your quarterback gets hurt, if someone in the backfield emerges and takes away some of your touches, if you get hurt, if you have an ankle sprain that costs you two games and then you're uh, and it's lingering for two other games, guess what? That season long projection is a near impossibility to hit if someone emerges from the backfield and takes 150 touches from you if you're just not very good at football if you're inefficient if you, everything needs to go right in order for you to hit your over but only one of those 10 things that I listed and there are way more things that you could probably list need to go wrong in order for you to hit your under and obviously injuries are a big uh, problem here now, I, I believe it counts as a DNP if a player misses. I don't uh, don't quote me on this, but I want to say if he misses five games or more, it's an auto DNP. So obviously, like, I think ACL tear or something like that knocks you off the table. But I'm talking about the minor injuries that cost most running backs. Most running backs don't play full 17 games. They play 16 games. They play 15 games. And it might not seem like a lot to miss, but that's huge when you're trying to bank on every yard to hit this over or under prop on these single player props, okay? So the easiest money maker in the betting world right now is prize picks season long props hitting the under on the majority of them, right? And this was another thing that I told y'all when they posted the 40 yard dash combine times on their site and everybody started off with like a 4-3-0-40. I'm like, bro, there's like one player 
each year at the combine, let alone just the running backs that go underneath a 4-3. It rarely happens. Hit the over on every single one of those, and we wiped that slate fucking clean. I think I hit 16 out of 18 slips I made from the fucking combine this year. This is the same energy here. The overs are miserable on season-long props, but all the fish and all the fucking dull-ass butter knife people in this industry will hit the overs because they think it's a lock. I guarantee you, you will be wildly more profitable by just taking the less on over almost every season-long prop here. So that's a little game theory before we dive into five of my favorite season-long props that are up on prize picks right now. Again, it's not a huge plethora of uh, stats to pick from at the moment, but I think there are enough that I'm getting excited about that I'm going to put some cash onto, and you should as well. If you're new to the platform, please use promo code BDGE. It supports us, but it also gets you a 100% deposit match. So if you throw 20 down to hit these season-long props, they're going to give you 40 to play with. If you throw 40 down, they're going to give you 80, and you can deposit up to $100 to get that 100% deposit match. So the link to download the Prize Picks app will be in the description down below. Let's go win some money. The first prop, and I promise you every single one that I name, all of you guys behind the screen are going to be like, that's a bad pick. He's easily going to hit the over. There's no doubt about it. This is how you lose money. This is how I fucking win money, all right? Travis Etienne. 1150.5 1150.5 rushing yards. You guys out there will say, he's a workhorse. He's going to get all the touches. He's going to get all the carries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Guess what? I'm taking the under here. Travis Etienne played 17 games last year and still went under this number. Now, that's not a great argument considering he did not start off the year as a workhorse. James Robinson was there, you know, balling out for the first few weeks of the season, which obviously hampered Etienne's complete touch total but Doug Peterson coming out this offseason makes me hesitate a little bit like we know the history of Doug Peterson he came out and said you got to have two to three guys uh, and offered a firm yes when asked about adding running backs to the room now again ETM played all 17 games and still went under this number will he play 17 this year maybe maybe not uh, Jamichael Hasty got extended. They bring in Dearness Johnson. I would be kind of surprised if they do not leave the running back or they do not leave the NFL draft with a rookie running back. They have Snoop Connor, who they, they say they like, but all their actions don't really point to it. I just don't like when Doug Peterson comes out and says this rather than saying something like, you know, we'd like to lean on Travis Etienne to like a heavy degree on the ground. And I know it seems like a low total, like 1,150 rushing yards, not that much. Only six running backs in the entire NFL hit this number last year. It was Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, Saquon Barkley, Miles Sanders, Dalvin Cook, right? Five out of those six names we know are like premier runners in the NFL. Miles Sanders is the one that I would comp most to Travis Etienne and say, okay, maybe, you know, maybe he hits that number. I think Etienne will have a great year. Like he's not someone I'm fading in fantasy whatsoever, but I think it's most likely because their offense will be really improved like a better offensive line which yes can attribute to him being good on the on the ground but he's already very efficient on the ground to begin with but it'll lead to more scoring opportunities I think he'll score more overall touchdowns because they'll be in more scoring opportunities as an offense as a whole I think he'll catch more passes but even when ETM became like the workhorse if you look at their last five games over the 2022 season he had 10 or fewer carries in three of those five games and I think there will be stretches of this upcoming season where that stuff happens where he gets eight carries and goes for fucking 46 yards or whatever and that's detrimental to when you're trying to hit the over on these season-long props one injury wipes this out so etn's my first square that i'm taking the under on the next one i'm taking the under on cd lamb under 1225.5 receiving yards and i know you guys are gonna be like he went way over that last year he was like 1350 1400 yards some shit like that so for me to take the under feels feels like a reach and it might be except for the fact that this offense is going to be drastically different in 2023 they lose sorry i'm trying to be more conscious about me slapping the damn table because i get a lot of comments about it but i'm one day i'm gonna i'm gonna handcuff myself for a video with my hands behind my back and just talk like this i actually feel like it might be a good trap workout so maybe i will do that or i could tape my wrist to the table i feel so awkward it's not even like i don't know what to do with my hands it's like they just it's like my fingers have their own brain like each of these 10 fingers has their own brain you're lucky i don't have bullets in these fingers Actually, I'm lucky because I'd fucking be shooting my office up. Oh, the offense. The offense. They lose Kellen Moore as their offense coordinator, which is one of the more underrated moves of the entire offseason. He goes over to the Chargers. That offense is going to be fucking straight fireworks. It's going to be straight 4th of July 
in December there in L.A. Since Kellen Moore has been the O.C. in Dallas, they've ranked as an offense like top five in pace, passing plays per game, overall plays per game. Like, they're a team that just has crazy high volume. C.D. Lamb, again, played in all 17 games last year. I know a lot of that sounds kind of like the, oh, he has to regress because he scored so many touchdowns and he was so good. But usually, I, I hate that argument because good players are above the median line because they're good. Like, that's why. Like, they don't always have to regress. But injuries, it, injuries are, you're not safe from injuries no matter how fucking good you are. It doesn't matter. So, injury regression, I think, is a real thing. Didn't do a study on it, but motherfuckers get hurt, okay? They do bring in Brandon Cooks. I know that they're not a high-powered offense. Michael Gallup will now be a full year and a half, two years removed from the ACL tear. They bring in Brandon Cooks, who is still, I think, still very much a player. Won't be like the number one by any means, but it'll be a really, really nice secondary piece to this offense and the passing offense. But I just don't think the offense overall is going to pass the ball a ton. Like Mike McCarthy, as soon as Kellen Moore was out, like the reason he got rid of him, and I quote, I just want to run the damn ball when describing the difference between himself and former offensive coordinator Kellen Moore. It's weird because Zeke is gone. But I also think there's a decent probability that after the June 1 cut, they actually re-sign Zeke for a lighter contract. I'd be surprised if he doesn't want to come back to Dallas and play again. And I I, I think the personnel dictates that it's going to be tough for them to go more run heavy. But Mike McCarthy will force this offense to be that way. And I just don't see it being a high explosive passing offense like they've been in recent years because Kellen Moore was the mastermind behind the way this offense operated. So do I think it's going to be an inefficient offense? No. But do I think it'll be high volume? Also, no. So I'll take the CD Lamb under just out of principle. And going off that, I'm also going to take number three, Dak Prescott under passing yards, 4,375.5. In Dak's seven career seasons, he has hit this number. He's hit the the more on this number twice, okay? And if you want to look back and look at the stats, like last year and 2020, the reason he didn't hit it were injury-related. But again, injuries work in your favor when you are taking the under on season-long lines. Uh, he hit this number in 2019 and barely in 2021. And again, when you look back at their offense in those years, 2019, 37.3 pass attempts per game, top 10. Their pace was second highest in the NFL. They're seventh in plays per game. When you look at 2021, 38.4 pass attempts per game, fifth highest in the NFL, second highest pace, second most plays per game. Again, if you think Mike McCarthy is willingly going to run an up-tempo offense in which he's got to run down the sideline more often than not, just think about it. That's that's that common sense I'm talking about. You think fucking Mike McCarthy wants to run down the sideline? Hell no. He wants to milk the clock two yards at a time. Let him do saddle, fucking side lateral Squats, great exercise for you, for your ass cheeks, by the way. When you see Mike McCarthy doing that shit on the sideline this year, you heard it here first. You know why. It was all because Dak Prescott not hitting his over. Uh, so give me, give me the combination of Dak and CD both under on these. Now, number four is a teammate duo. I think this is interesting. I don't know if I have a strong take on this. This is a spot where... The more might make sense. The more might make sense. You have A.J. Brown at 1150.5. You have Devonta Smith at 1100.5 flat. So they have them projected 50 yards apart. Last year, both of them played in the full 17 games. Smith had 1196 yards, so 1200 basically. A.J. Brown had 1496 yards, so 1500 basically. That's a, that's a very clear, visible difference of who is the alpha, who is not the alpha. 300-yard difference, but only 50 yards in the projections for this upcoming year. And even here, I feel more comfortable taking the under on Smith than I do taking the over on A.J. Brown. Where do you, how do you guys feel here? There's a lot of me that wants to go with the over on A.J. Brown here. 1,150 coming off of last year. He's like their deep threat. Jalen Hurts obviously improved, but everyone played the full games. You know, it's like I, I still just like the under on all these players, especially ones coming off of full 17-game seasons where their stat lines are basically based off of what they did last year with no injury regression kind of factored into it. So I don't know if I'd stay away from this one. I kind of like the under on Smith. I kind of like the over on A.J. Brown. What are y'all doing here uh, for the Philly wide receivers? Drop a comment down below. And if you do go to Prize Picks and hit these bets, again, make sure you sign up with promo code BDGE. They'll hit you with a 100% deposit match, whatever you put down. And also, as I mentioned earlier, like there will be way more offerings as the spring and summer come on. When they add receptions into this, that's when I absolutely fucking, I love hitting the reception unders on these because they start, like in the same sense that they start everyone with a 4-3-0 40-yard dash at the combine, no one hits that. They start every receiver 
every tight end, every receiver at like 100, somewhere between like 96 and 100 reception. Now, do some of them go over? Sure. But like three to four players in the entire NFL go over that on a yearly basis, like on average, just hit the under. More often than not, you're going to be right on these things. It's not 100% hit rate. It never will be. But when you're betting, when you're gambling, when you're, when you're hitting parlays and stuff, it's about being on the spectrum. And we're not talking autism here. It's about being right 60 to 70% of the time, okay? Maybe we are a little autistic with this shit, but I think it's common sense. The last one that I really like is Najee Harris's under on rushing yards. He is at 1,050.5 rushing yards simply because I watched Najee Harris with my eyeballs last year. I don't know if there's a number that actually, I mean, if he dipped into triple digits, if it was like 950, I definitely would probably stay away from uh, the under. But I just think about... I, this this is kind of conflicting because it's it's a little bit difficult to base off base his season for the upcoming year on what happened last year because we saw the second half of the year his carry totals his rushing yards totals his efficiency his his productiveness and the team overall was way better the second half of the year I still think they're an influx offense they're moving in the right direction but I think they're in flux still I think their offensive line while improved through free agency is not some sort of, you know, 180 degree turnaround where I expect them to be, you know, a top 12 or top eight run blocking offensive line. I still think they're pretty poor, but they did improve. I'll admit that. But he's just been inefficient both years he's been in the NFL. You know, a lot of rookie running backs who are really hyped up might have inefficient rookie years, but tend to have those monster second years. Like I'm thinking about Le'Veon Bell. I'm thinking about Melvin Gordon. We're like, ah, they were so inefficient. Like maybe they're just not that good. Go crazy year two. Najee Harris just didn't really do that. So we're seeing back-to-back -back inefficient years. And yes, it's probably a product of the team around him. But that also says something. If you can only be as good as the team around you, you just might not be that good as a running back. And I think what scares me more so is Jalen Warren. I know Mike Tomlin likes to use a workhorse, but if, again, you watched any Steelers games last year in the games in which they had Jalen Warren involved, he has a gear to his game that Najee Harris simply does not have, and I just don't think they can ignore him for much longer. Like, I, I don't see a world where Jalen Warren doesn't get 8 to 10 touches per game in the 2023 season. If you look at his efficiency numbers, true yards per carry, top 12 in the NFL among running backs, yards per touch, number 11, his juke rate, which is basically the elusiveness rating that player profiler uses, Top five in the NFL, evaded tackles, that's just a volume number, so he didn't get as many carries, so don't pay attention to that. Breakaway run rate, 16 in the NFL. He's explosive, he's a good runner. He's undersized, but that's a really good change of pace to Najee Harris. Najee Harris, like the bruiser, I could see him getting a lot of those empty calorie touches within the 20s. Goal line touches, sure, we're not out here trying to guess touchdowns right now, we're just trying to guess volume, rushing totals. Will he have games of 20-plus carries? Yeah, probably, but... He didn't really have any huge explosion games. He had some good fantasy games. I just think over a long period of time, you eventually see a player struggling efficiency-wise as a running back, and you start to get other players involved, and I see that happening with Jalen Warren. Warren's probably like my favorite second-string handcuff running back in fantasy football right now. We'll see how highly he you know, shoots up in ADP and stuff like that. But Najee Harris, I just didn't – I haven't loved what I've seen out of him in the NFL, so I, I just – there's no chance I'm taking the more on him, plus the fact that I just like taking the unders on everybody – all the time anyways okay so go browse prize picks let me know what some of your favorite picks are let me know if what i said to y'all makes sense and it resonates with you a little bit because please if, if there's anything that you could take away from this video it's not the individual lines that i told you like this guy going under this it's just the overall action item of taking the majority of unders if you love an over go for it have fun it's fun rooting for the over but you know what's more fun than rooting for the over making motherfucking money and that's what we're doing here so go to prize picks use promo code bdge if you enjoyed the video make sure you hit the button that looks like this underneath it put the d in the subscribe button make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you are new and i will see you noah will see you on saturday we'll have a internal office vlog coming out sunday and then i'll be bye Monday with a Dynasty Rookie Mock Draft. I love you. Let's get after it this weekend.